Do you ever have something that you really, really wanted to do? And you found yourself so excited about this thing that you wanted to do that you just could not wait to share it with the people that you love, those that you care about, and um, people that you just think would be instrumental in sharing your vision with you. Then you get all amped up and you talk to them about your vision and they shoot it down. Well, you need to understand that your vision is something that came through you. It came to you and then through you. And that it's a vision that was given to you from God. And it's not something that another man can endorse or another man um, can put his or her stamp of approval on. You have to know that when you're given a vision, it is so very delicate. It is like being pregnant with an embryo and that you know that if you just found out that you were six or eight weeks pregnant, you would not go on a trampoline and jump and jump and jump and jump in excitement and have your friends come and jump on that trampoline with you. Because if that were to happen, the potential threat of a miscarriage could be very, very uh, uh, likely. Well, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about your vision, your dream, your vision. When God gives you this vision, he's giving you a baby that's going to come alive if you carry it through full term and then go through delivery and then receive that child and nurture it as it grows into a strong, prepared, and uh, blessed human being. With your vision, that is your baby, you need to receive the information that you have this vision. You need to get prayerful about it. Go to God, pray about this vision, and begin to pray for the resources. And, and you know that he says in his word, write the vision down and make it plain. And I will give you provision for the vision, says the Lord. Well, this is what you need to do. You need to not derail, not abort, not miscarry, not create threatening environments for your, for your baby, for your vision. But you need to get your pen and your pad and begin to write down exactly what you see. Don't worry about... Um, lack of resources, the things you don't have, what you can't do, what you don't know how to do, believe you me, if this vision is from God, everything you need will be at your feet. Trust me with this. Um, one of the things that I would say that you should do um, when it comes to your vision, uh, for things that you, you uh, know that this is definitely a part of my destiny. It's something that I know that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it's really important that you create an environment that supports this project, this campaign, this, this vision. Uh, you need to make certain that you are um, not cluttered by a whole bunch of uh, drama and um, setbacks and negative people. Clear your space, clear your head, your mind. Don't depend on people to celebrate this thing with you. This is personal right now. This is between you and the creator. Um, and so you just you get yourself focused and, and prepare your mind. That means before you can move forward, you need to get junk out of the way so that nothing stops you. Prepare your body. In order to have the wherewithal to get through any project such as a vision that's a part of destiny a purpose you need to first understand that that is the last thing the enemy wants to happen is for you to find out who you are what you're capable of doing what you were put here for in the first place and to be on track doing it that's a problem so you need to be strong physically you need to be eating right getting appropriate rest getting exercise 
strengthening your prayer life and your relationship with God so that you will be strong enough to get through everything that could possibly present itself um, against you in your spirit again being prayerful um, uh, uh, being tempered um, creating an environment that is tranquil with serenity and that means whatever it takes uh, getting yourself in position and those who are around you in position position will be very helpful one of the things I struggled with for the last couple of years as my husband and I left corporate America and he left his line of work um, we became entrepreneurs and um, tried to do it together that didn't work and try to do it apart and that was worse um, so what needed to happen for us is we both needed to be in our element of purpose and passion so once um, he was able to build his in-home studio and I was able to build my home office so that we could work in our perspective rights um, that peace and tranquility came in the home and allowed for a uh, cleaner environment for work and then for coming together as man and wife um, one of the other things that um, I think was very instrumental for me I don't know for you what would work was um, edifying and beautifying the environment that I work in and that I live in. I'm one that likes harmony and beautiful things. I like beauty and I just love things that smell good. So one of the things that became important to me, it's just not absolutely like uh, something that I can't do without, but it was important enough to me for me to do it. I love fresh flowers. So you know what I do? I buy fresh flowers at least once a week at the least. At the mo uh, if, 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 if not once a week, you better believe a week and a half goes by, fresh flowers will be in here. And I don't wait on my kids to bring them or my husband to bring them. I buy fresh, fresh flowers because I like fresh flowers. And you need to get to that place and understand who you are, what you like and what you love. And be the conductor of creating the environment that works for you. For me... I like to see fresh flowers. They allow me to escape and for me to admire and for me to trust and believe again. They minister to me, so I keep them around me. I also felt like I wanted to change the entire look of my home. Now I'm running with the option to buy. So here's an example of people telling you what you should and should not do. I have people talking to me saying, hey, you know, why are you painting a house that you don't own? Why are you, you know, sprucing up a house that belongs to someone else? Why are you investing in someone else's property? <laughs> if I listened to everybody else, I'd be stuck and unhappy. I'd be in unhappy land indefinitely. And that's one of the things you can't do. You can't allow people to get into your ear, ear gate and then plug it up within action they tell you don't move don't do this don't do that then they put the plugs on you can't hear from yourself you can't hear from God all you know is don't do that uh -uh, don't touch that I wouldn't do that if I were you mm, that's a risk don't take it blah 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 listen the only way that you're going to experience exponential growth is if you take risk so back to the house I was told don't do it you don't own it da da da, -da. I'm renting with the option to buy but I also understand if I'm renting, renting with the option, leasing, purchasing, or have purchased, I know that my, my goal is to be with God, to have eternal life and no house, no car, no wardrobe, nor advice from people who love me and have good intentions that may fail me can come with me paradise so while I'm here I don't have a problem with investing in my life my surroundings my loved ones and those who need my helping hand my advice to you is that whatever it is you need to do to be productive and to create the flow do it that means if a can of paint is going to give you the freedom energy and creativity you need your walls if that means 
that you have a wardrobe full of gray and black clothing and you just feel like you're invisible, take yourself shopping and fuel your closet with reds and yellows and greens and oranges and mm -hmm, get you a whole lot of white too. Do whatever it takes to get you to your better you. Whatever it takes to get you at peak performance, to clean up your environment so that you can move freely and get to your purpose, do it. Don't depend on the next person to give you the energy, the confidence, the endorsement, the approval that you think you need. You don't need it. God said, write the vision down and make it plain, and I will provide provision for the vision. I believe God. Who do you believe? Do you believe God? Who can do all things but fail? Who has the power in his hand? Who knew you before he placed you in the womb? Who called you great before you even took a breath or your first steps? Are you going to believe the naysayers? We don't even know what the motivation is behind their advice. You don't know if it's because they love you, they fear for you, they're in fear of you, they hate you. You don't know what it is. You don't know what the underlying motivation is behind. That I wouldn't do that. Think about that now. That's a big risk. I left corporate America in 2008. It was no easy thing to do to transition from having a paycheck that came every day to creating wealth for myself. One of the things that I'm so glad I came to realize is that I was wealthy before the money began to come along with the work that I was doing. Creating wealth for yourself means creating a pool of resources, energy, positive people, positive thoughts, positive dreams, positive outcomes, positive jobs. That's wealth. When we think positive thoughts, we speak positive words, and we reap positive results. At the end of the day, that's what matters most. It's not what you put into a matter. It's what you bring out of it. Thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure, as always.